man. So I just got done doing a like four, four hour stream. And um, I'm just going to take a break or whatever before I play a little bit more offline. I've been playing Apex um, and I've been seeing, you know, comment sections and I've been looking at, you know, certain videos or whatever with those comments. And I just kind of want to cover, I guess, something that somebody asked me to make a video about, you know, companies that I, uh, I would say recommend getting products from and stuff like that and obviously i can't cover like every single category as far as certain products depending on you know your use case scenario what those products might be whether you need it for lighting or content creation or gaming or something like that um it's going to be kind of hard to you know say what companies or whatever because i might not have a company that i've worked with i would say that i recommend in a certain category that you might be interested in so just take what I say with a grain of salt as well, because that's why I put in the review disclaimers in the beginning of the videos that your experience and use case scenario might be different than mine. And the way I explain it is my use case scenario, how it worked in my, when, in my workflow, do I recommend it or not for what I am explaining inside the review for and everything like that. And to pretty much show off the product to you before you go and purchase it. But the thing about product reviews is that you should be watching, you know, six seven eight 20 different videos or wherever on the product if there's that many videos so you know what i'm saying on the product depending on if it's brand new or you know maybe it's obscure product that maybe somebody hasn't covered really on youtube or something like that because maybe it's just an unboxing video and that's it um and you should also be looking at negative reviews of products not positive reviews. You know what I'm saying? Um, when it comes to purchasing things on Amazon that I use for myself on a daily basis or something for my family that I might not cover like on YouTube or something like that, I always look at the negative reviews first. If it has pictures and videos, then I watch those too, especially like on Amazon. And I know a lot of Amazon reviews you can't trust, especially like the five to four star video uh, reviews. You can't really trust them. But with people who have like videos showing off the product, using the product, pictures or something like that, or they have, like I said, negative reviews, like two to one star reviews, and they tell you why they gave it that rating or something like that, and or they want to recommend it. Nine times out of 10, you can find out if whatever reason you want to get that product for is you know, the cause of their negative review, because maybe it doesn't fit what they were going to use the product for, you know what I'm saying? And that might be the same use case scenario you were going to use the product for. So again, I would recommend doing that on everything. And I wouldn't trust custom, uh, I would say com companies websites, because I've been told from IX tech, uh, from a viewer of mine who purchased something from IX tech before that their product, uh, wherever was so bad as far as cosmetic blemishes and all that stuff and getting the wrong product and not getting a replacement, couldn't get a hold of customer service and all that stuff with IX tech. That's why I said, probably in the future, I'm not going to work with them. And if I do, it's, I'm going to buy the product myself, um, just based off of their experience and stuff like that, because I don't want to see sit here and seem like I condone a company not giving justified customer service on a product that's literally fucked up that passed, you know, their, you know, quality check somehow. I, I don't I don't understand it. And like I said, when he left the review on the that website, they removed the review. And then when he posted the same negative review on Amazon, they posted a counter review to theirs talking great about everything that he talked bad about. And I'll leave that full video down in the description for you or wherever. It's the video talking about uh, exposing companies and content creators um, that do product reviews. But like I said, with all that information, I've made this video like three, four times in the past, like I would say month or two. And I had a comment saying, you know, should I talk about companies that I trust and, you know, products that I would trust and, and everything like that and ones to avoid and everything. And I've thought about this topic for a while. And like I said, I just recorded a video right before this one. And that video ended up being like 40 minutes long. So I'm not going to get too ranty or anything like that because again some some comment sections man they're like some comments on the in the comment section is just it, it kind of just ir irritates me and triggers me easily with ptsd that's why i've said it multiple times i self-isolate and stay at home i don't venture out into the real world unless i'm doing something for the va because i'm a you know u.s army veteran 100 percent disabled so unless i'm going to an appointment like that then i just stay at home you know what i'm saying because interactions with humans or wherever and people playing dumb or just being dumb and stupid and saying stuff stupid or whatever that stuff and then try to insult my intelligence and all that like there's the list of triggers go on and that's why like i said i usually stay at home and i know some people will say don't you know 
be in your comment section and stuff like that. But it's like, I want to interact with you guys. You know what I'm saying? I want to try to help you guys because there was nobody there for me when I was, you know, talking about my, uh, I would say content creation journey. I'll leave that video down in the description as well. Um, there was nobody for me when I was purchasing these products. I only could trust, you know, these big name YouTubers and content creators who were suggesting products and then I would get them and they were complete ass. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, yeah, I had to return some, some of them at the time and, and, and the point that I purchased them, there was nothing else on the market that came close. So I was stuck with a pile of junk and nobody has still addressed any of the Elgato issues for the software or anything. But in the comment sections, when I did the audio mixer reviews, I'm seeing people agreeing with me, resonating with me about the Elgato stuff or the stuff about Beacon. You know what I'm saying? I've had somebody tell me that they've had the Beacon Mix Create and the microphone for like two, three years or wherever, and they had nothing but frustration and issues and wouldn't recommend it to anybody. Then recently, I just got a, a comment or wherever that's like, uh, the whole documentary about like their life with the product of beacon mix and create and like stuff from elgato and all this stuff and i'm like okay it's good that you had a good experience and he's like oh i had you know four or five other friends you know get these products and we all good and i would recommend them and everybody would recommend them and then at the last time at the last bottom he was like oh and i bought everything myself and i've received no free hardware and have not been paid and i'm like okay that's that's good for you and your experience. But what about everybody else's? What about the overwhelming negative sentiment the community has with Beacon's products? Not to mention, you never addressed any of the overpriced products. And if you don't believe me, in the microphone, I would say boom arm review I did for the Mayano microphone boom arm, I literally exposed Beacon, Mayano, IX Tech, and other companies out there charging 60 80 dollars and in the case of beacon 120 dollars for the same microphone boom arm that i literally found on amazon from vivo vivo or wherever for literally 50 dollars. it's literally the same microphone boom arm all they did was put their own company's name on the side beacon is charging 120 dollars for a microphone boom arm that you can literally find for 50 and you're defending the company because you had a good experience that's fine but that's why i said you need to look at the negative reviews what problems are people experiencing with a product that's why i do my reviews the way i do them it's good if you never had a problem issue i'm glad i'm happy for you like i said with elgato stuff if you never had a problem with elgato software or hardware or anything and you think their prices are justified by all means you know what I'm saying? I don't agree with you on the justification of the pricing of their products. I think they're over like overpriced. But again, if you never had a problem, that's that's fine. You know what I'm saying? That's great for you. I'm actually happy for you because it's frustrating to continuously have problems with them. I literally had an issue with EQing and trying to do the Vimo Q, you know, wireless microphone system. The review is coming up pretty soon. I had to re-record the video like four or five times because of the VSTs and the software and trying to grab, you know, screenshots of this. It's just, it's, it's so much of a headache. You know what I'm saying? But unfortunately right now, like I've talked about in those audio mixer videos that I've done like three of them or wherever, and one of them really popped off. Thank you guys so much for that. I, I can't do anything about it because there's nothing really out there that does what I need or wherever. And it's going to be as polished as Elgato software, even though it's a polished herd, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, unless I go with like the likes of, you know, the road, uh, you know, Rodecaster duo or the Mackie DLZ creator, but those are like 400, $500 hardware, you know what I'm saying? And it still has the lack of having software to control sub mixes. You see what I'm saying? So the only thing is, is that, like I said, Go XLR has come back apparently and has never died and they're getting sub mixes with their software updates and everything. But the problem is, is that they only have one XLR input and I'm not trying to unplug this microphone, unplug the XLR microphone above, you know, and unplug the stream microphone and swap XLR cables or wherever, whenever I want to come over here or test the microphone over here or go over there and stream and stuff like that, or do voiceovers for a video. I'm not trying to do all that. I have a audio mixer from Comica over here with two XLR inputs and I have the Wave XLR over there. So technically I need at least bare minimum three XLR inputs. The Gold XLR is not gonna handle that. It's just not gonna do it. Not to mention the price for it. Even though it's good now that it has sub mixes and that's what we need. And just again, the product is, itself is good. It's just the price of it and how long it's been out 
and it's still asking for the original price, it's like the Shure SM7B. Yeah, you're riding on the coattails of your namesake or wherever and how many people purchase your product. But it's like, bro, it's been out for a long time. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't make any sense. I've seen people say they got the Go XLR Mini or wherever for like 130 something, somebody said. And I was like, oh, that's, that's good. You know what I'm saying? My friend got a Shure SM7B for like 200 something dollars, like on the lower end of $200. I was like, the used because the guy was just trying to get rid of it because he was moving and stuff. Like, I was like, that's good. You know what I'm saying? Uh, that's, that's great. You know, it, uh, don't knock a good product. You know what I'm saying? If you can get it on a deal, but paying full price for something that's been out for years. It's just kind of crazy to me just because it's a staple or it's the brand is crazy. I don't care how good it is. You know what I'm saying? I don't care if I wake up and it cooks me breakfast. You know what I'm saying? If the thing's been out for that long and there's other microphones out there that are cheaper that you can get good sound from. And then people only recommending that microphone like 500. Like what? You know what I'm saying? What I'm saying? Like it just doesn't make any sense to me. So, yes look at negative reviews don't just listen to the hollabaloo of people who hollabaloo <laughs> can't believe i just said that don't listen to the you know the reviews when somebody's typing out something like this and saying oh I, no i had a great experience so i recommend it to everybody and i had three or four friends and it's like a friend of a friend told me you know what i'm saying kind of scenario and like i said it's good if this person had you know a positive experience with the product and everything like that but like I said, I can go through and find just as many comments as good ones or wherever, if not more of the negative experiences with the Beacon software or just the Beacon hardware, not even the microphone, but also like the Beacon, Beacon Mix crate and just seeing that or wherever. And it's not even like, oh, does it have better reviews over negative reviews? It's what can, is the context of the negative reviews that scare me from purchasing it. You know what I'm saying? It's not like I'm rolling a dice and, oh, I might get a good instance. You know what I'm saying? It might just work out for me. I'm not willing to, you know, take that chance, especially since looking at the microphone boom arm and exposing them for that. That tells me right there that that Beacon Mix Create should not cost that much. That microphone should not cost that much. If I'm able to find it like their microphone boom arm for that cheap, that tells me right there that something's up. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's completely obvious to me. So it's just use some common sense you know what i'm saying when it comes to dealing with companies when it comes to comment sections and reviews and stuff like that just use common sense and then look towards more of the negative reviews lastly i'm going to go over some companies or wherever that in my personal experience have had good customer service uh whether i purchased a product with myself uh, for myself or wherever with money and did a review on or are going to do a review on or you know a company has sent out a product or wherever and my interactions with those representatives and um I would probably do this in the future more so when I, you know, work with, I would say different brands or wherever in the future, and I'll go back and make a video where we're talking about my experience with them. Um, one of them, like I mentioned earlier, I've, I'm working with Comica for this one. This is going to be the fourth video on a Comica product and the third one that they have sent out a product with. And I've never had a problem or issues with uh, both of their wireless lavalier systems that they have sent out. The Comica Adcast C2, I'm using it right now. You know what I'm saying? Like I haven't had a problem with it at all since I've gotten it. And the Comica VM30, I still have that microphone or wherever. I'll probably use that if I travel or something and I don't want to bring like an XLR overhead microphone, boom microphone. Um, it's a really good microphone. I still love it. I like the sound quality. And every time I've worked with a representative has been different every single time and never had a bad instance with them or wherever. So again, quality of products or wherever. Yes, some of their stuff is expensive. Like this is like 250, I think, or 249. Uh, for this product but again it's four microphones and the audio quality is really good and one receiver or wherever and it's going to be really good for those who need that kind of stuff so you know like i said price to performance experience with the customer service or the customer um representatives or wherever that you know work with their marketing team and and doing content creation stuff or wherever and sending out products and everything never had an issue with them you know what i'm saying um another company is going to be fine fine again i keep saying on here on the channel that's the reason why i reached out to them and asked for a sponsorship and you know they pay me for some of their reviews now going forward um so any reviews from this day going forward pretty much um are going to be labeled as sponsored videos uh but the reason why i did that and reached out to them to you know secure that and have them constantly work with me and work with the representative 
is because for one, I'm impressed with their products. For two, never had a problem or issue with the company working with them or, you know, buying products with my own money because there's several that I have bought like the A16, the Fine Fine SC3 audio mixer and um, what was it? The H9s or whatever for the headphones. I purchased all those with my money. Never had a problem or issue with them. And they're great devices in their own right for their own use case scenario. And like I said, just all around a really good uh, experience with them. Okay, so uh, two other companies that I would recommend um, is going to be Govi. I had two products or wherever that had some issues from them. I've only did like a Govi video once or wherever, but never really fully deep dived in any of the products. It was just using their products for a unique scenario when you're on a budget for your, you know, live streams or your office setup or something like that. But those were terrible videos. That's when I first started doing product reviews and I didn't know what I was doing. Um, but yeah, as you can see, like this Govi curtain or wherever I have the light bars and hexagon panel and obviously the LED strips. And I have several LED strips like in my living room studio, if you guys have been around for that, um, even in my bedroom or wherever I have some LED strips in there. Um, and my office ceiling lights or wherever are, you know, Govi uh, light bulbs. So like 90% of my home that has RGB is from Govi. And I've tried to reach out to them once or wherever to possibly do a review on the curtain lights or something like that. But other than that, never had a problem or issues with any of their products um, as far as, you know, experiencing using it other than two products. Uh, one was one of these uh, light bars or whatever that go on the back of your monitor. Um, somebody had returned the package and unfortunately that package got mixed up and got sent to me. So what happens in that Govi app, you link it to your own Govi profile and the person didn't unlink it before they sent it back. So I couldn't use the functions of the app because I couldn't, you know, tie it to my Govi app. And all I could do was physically switch the lights and all it did was do uh, solid colors and that's it. They let me keep the product because there's really no reason for me to send it back because there's nothing they can really do about it. And they sent me on a brand new one. And that showed up like the day, next day, if not like a day and a half later. You know what I'm saying? So then they didn't try to like say anything bad or anything like that. They were just really nice about it. They were like, hey, sorry that you ran into this issue. We're going to send you another one. And that's what happened. And then another one is one of their floor lamps, the Laura floor lamp or wherever, wherever, however it's pronounced. Um, that one can only do daylight color temperatures now. And anytime I put on solid colors or any you know customization in the app um, with colors, it starts flickering, like seizure inducing, I would say flickering. Um, and not not like this or wherever, but just actually like rapid, like it's just crazy. Uh, it just goes ham. So I sent them a video telling them that, you know, I'm not sure what happened here. I'm not sure why I just started doing this. It just started. They were like, yeah, it looks like a defective product. Had another one sent out to me. You know what I'm saying? And though that floor lamp was like the first one I bought from them. And that now that's like three or probably going on four years ago, if not longer or something like that, um, that I had that. Wow. I <laughs> just thinking about that. That's been long. And, um, the, the little light bars or whatever I was talking about, is probably about three or four years now, I would say. So the floor lamp is probably like almost five years. Yeah. It's almost like four or five years now. And the bars or whatever is like three to four. And like I said, Ever since then, I've made, you know, purchases like the LED strips, the the bars that go on the wall, the hexagon panels. That's a new design that I'm trying out. However, that's not a fault with the product. I know it looks kind of weird, but uh, the the curtain lights and stuff like that. Like I said before, I'm thinking about getting another curtain light to put over here and replacing this Walmart thing um, just for symmetry and how it look, would look over here. Um, but yeah, never had a problem with them. Great customer service. Really cool people who handle their social media accounts or whatever on Twitter um really great products in the space or wherever they're mid in between expensive and budget friendly or wherever they do have stuff like several products under a hundred dollars like uh the the little bars i've seen the curtain lights for like 80 bucks you know what i'm saying before but these little light bars or wherever without the right angle you can find typically like 50 bucks you can go in walmart and get these led strips they have more and more products that are getting released in walmart i even have their led strips or wherever kit for the car I paid for like 30 something bucks or whatever, I think in Walmart for it. And then I found the second pair that I have in my car or wherever for like 10 bucks on Amazon. It was like 9.79 or something like that. So like I'm a big component of Govi. 
just because great quality products and a customer experience. Like I said, lastly, the company that I would say for actual content creation, as far as like getting the studio lights and stuff, I would go with the company newer. Um, this light back here that's shining on me, wherever I've covered it multiple times in the past, this light is no longer on sale from newer. I have two of them and I wish there was more on sale, but they're 60 watt lights. They're pretty good. Um, the light that's shining the pink purple light over back, I purchased because I wanted to upgrade uh, as far as how powerful the light was for my key light because I constantly want to get into, you know, photography and like doing outside videos and you know filming more dancing videos and stuff like that but mostly photography for my family doing you know, family photos or possibly getting some paid work to do you know community photos or something so i need a more powerful light than this light back here that's 60 watts so i went with 130 watts that has the rgb capability as well as regular light capability and the thing about it is it has a little brother the cb 60b i think it is and again this one's the cb 100c and i was like this one was on sale for 189 dollars. the other one was on sale for like 130 or 40 but i wanted to get the overkilled version so i could do a review on it and let you guys know this will be the, like the last light that you need i had it for a whole entire month and then it finally just stopped working like I turned it off on the app the next day I was coming in to do actually the review for the light and on the app it won't it wouldn't turn on and when I flipped the switch and flipped it back on or wherever on the back the light doesn't come on so if you turned it off on the on the the app even if you flip the switch on the back there's no reset button there's no nothing um so I didn't know how to get the light to turn back on so I contacted newer about it and they sent out this replacement this replacement now when I turn it off on the app or wherever and it's been on, it makes a loud noise wherever that can be heard very audibly. And I'll go back or wherever so you can hear the whine noise again. And it's like if you're trying to, you know, do obviously photo shoots for clients, you know, you're doing streaming, you're doing videos like this and you're not using a dynamic microphone, that sound, if you don't have it on, it's going to be picked up. You know what I'm saying? And of course, I could just unplug it, you know, not have it or something like that. But obviously, I want it and I want to use it, especially for like photography and stuff like that. And it's like it's a real disappointment because I have a whole bunch of newer products. I have our overhead rig that I don't know if you guys would be interested in doing a review on, but I think it's pretty dope. And like I said, I have a whole bunch of newer products that I've bought for content creation because I think they're a good budget level, uh, entry level company for products for content creators, especially doing videography and photography work um, who just needed like accessories and things to get that stuff done. And like I said, upgrading to a more studio light, office light kind of light and seeing the quality I was getting here where two products pretty much failed, um, at least at least this one turns on the other one i still can't get it to turn on no matter what and there's like i said no reset button or even like the little app will tell you a reset button for the cb60 b or c or whatever the little brother and i tried that way and it still didn't work and so and i'm like i said in the app it doesn't show you a way to reset the light but it'll show all the other lights that work in the app and i'm like how does this light don't have a reset button so I told them about it. I told them my frustrations. They sent out a three hundred and like fifty, sixty dollar light, almost four hundred dollars. It's the CB two hundred C from newer. This is the kind of light that you would expect to see, like in music videos, corporation work, you know, stuff like that. And again, it's like a two hundred watt light. I understand you will probably need a light a little bit more powerful than that. Typically, like three hundred and up, you would see in those kind of scenarios. But the build quality, the way it looks, how heavy the light is, all that stuff, you would expect it to see. Like I said, on movie, uh, not necessarily movie sets, but music video sets. Um, interviews, corporation sets, like stuff like that, that you would do more professional client work with. This is the kind of light that you would use, especially at that price point. And they just send it out for free and we're like, yo, sorry that you're experiencing this. So that's great customer service. And that's only once instance of the over like three years I've been doing product reviews since I started using their products that I've run into an issue. And I've bought a lot of their cheaper lights and never had an issue with any of them. It's just like I said, when I upgraded to one of their cob lights, unfortunately, I had an issue. And they literally told me, like, with no marketing speak, no nothing. They're like, man, this is crazy that you're having this many issues. We're going to go back and do some QA, uh, 
QC testing, pretty much quality checking that line of light because they're like, this is unacceptable. This should not be happening. We don't want, you know, people who are doing content creation, doing photography, live streaming, all that stuff. We don't want them to run into this issue that you're running into. And it's like, I almost felt like I was cursed, you know what I'm saying, with this light. And I was like, I don't want them to send me out a third one. And, you know, it fail again. And it's just like, they're going to start thinking that I'm doing something. And it's like, I'm literally not, I'm just leaving it in its spot. And that's it. You know what I'm saying? So again, no issues with this one so far. I've had it for about two weeks, two weeks and a half, something like that. And um, yeah, I'm really impressed by this light. It's crazy good. And I think it's really overkill. And I don't know if I do a review on it. Would anybody even care that's on my channel? Because this is going to be a little bit more expensive out of pocket. But for doing content creation like this, if you wanted something overkill that you would never have to replace your lights with, it's going to be that. And then a close runner up, if they do what they're supposed to do with the CB 100 uh, C series, that would be also overkill. But that one would be more comfortable, especially if you can find it under $200, because that would be one of the lights that you would you would never never need to get another light and if you needed a rim light or rgb light or something like that then you can go with this little brother to cb uh 60c or b whatever it's called and you'll be perfectly fine for content creation going forward and like i said these are the kind of companies that i recommend and tldr if you didn't catch any of it it's ones that have good customer service a good track record of customer service as well as you doing your own research watching multiple videos on a product that you're potentially going to buy as well as looking at all the negative reviews forget forget the the positives you know what i'm saying it's good if it has overwhelmingly positive it's great but you can't trust websites now even amazon you can't trust the custom uh, the customer not the customer but the um the company's website you know what I'm saying? You have to look at the negative reviews. And if you're looking at a product and there is no negative reviews or anything below, probably like a four star review or something like that, red flag should be going off. If you're looking at YouTube videos and you're watching multiple product reviews on, you know, on YouTube about a product and all of them talk great about the product and it might be just one person mentioning a negative like oh there's a black mark over here and that's it and they're not talking about in comparison to other products out there or any possible like negatives or something like that unless it's just completely understandable like you're probably not going to really have that much negative like on a low profile boom arm you know what i'm saying like maybe the reach or something like that or like the design that i was talking about with the fine fine bm8 88 versus like the other low profile boom arms that were sent out to me you can see the cable snag design or wherever but the low profile boom arm from fine fine which literally the white one has the problem of being getting dirty wherever because the paint style for the white one and it had a little blemish on it and that's it I, I still use it you know it's still over here you know what i'm saying it's a it's a great low profile boom arm the only problem is is that like i said for multiple low profile boom arms or just microphone boom arms period these things shouldn't be costing as much even with it being around 50 dollars it's a great microphone boom arm but honestly it should be like 20 you know what i'm saying like even this microphone boom arm from fine fine that they sent out it's over 60 dollars, i think if i remember correctly and i called it out like it's only been doing this the whole entire time for the video it's not ai tracking built in to follow me you know back and forth or something like that then yeah i could see being over 60 bucks but if it's, it's just something simple like that and they don't even address the price run away fast and then mayano with just the crappy products that they're bringing out i i don't i don't like them and people have said they got you no know, products sent to them from mayano their pd series and stuff i don't like the pd 200x i'm just gonna be honest they sent it out to me the only thing that was good about it was the software and the capability with the software through um usb but the price of the microphone and having three different white colors on the microphone itself and the build quality and all that stuff in comparison to the fine fine stuff and even the tonar microphone that was sent out and even the ix tech microphone that was sent out all these microphones being around the same price it's it's laughable you know what i'm saying that they can charge how much they are and if you never had a problem with mayano you know what i'm saying your experience differed than mine you know what i'm saying so it is what it is, you know what I mean? But I'm, I can only talk about my experiences. You know what I'm saying? I can only be honest about my feelings about stuff and my experiences, just like people are honest in the comment sections of my videos when they say that they had good experiences with Beacon and stuff and Elgato products and software and all that stuff. That's fine. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, I'm glad that you're having a positive, you know, experience and positive, you giving positive feedback and stuff. That's great. But like I said, people also need to know about the negatives 
You know what I'm saying? You can't have the light without the dark. I say in my review disclaimer, nothing man-made is perfect. And there's too many people out there walking around acting like these products are, are perfect because they had a positive experience with the product. Again, I could tell you, talk to you positively about this system. I could talk to you positively about, you know, the fine, fine Ample Tank Tank 3 or any fine, fine product. But you could buy any of these products that I'm talking about and I'm suggesting and everything like that after watching multiple reviews. Uh, God forbid you just watch my review and that's it. And you purchase the product and it's completely trash. You know what I'm saying? You have a completely opposite experience with the company or you're a content creator and you had a bad experience with the, one of the representatives. You know, that's like I said, that's the luck of the draw. That's the roll of the die. But approaching a product that I'm going to spend my own money on and a company not sending it out for free. Best believe I'm looking at all the negative reviews and I'm looking at all the reviews I can as far as videos, photos, all that stuff before I go out and make a purchase. I'm not going to let my money burn a hole in my pocket, as my dad used to say. I'm just not going to do that. I'm going to use like I have some common sense, like I have a brain. I'm done. Now, y'all take care. Have a squid task today. Like the video if you want to. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Check out the live stream link in the description below. God bless you and yours and deuces, everybody. Much love.